let's talk about brachial plexitis. So brachial plexitis is thought to be due to immune mediated damage to the brachial plexus. There may be a preceding viral infection or vaccination that typically occurs in over half of patients and it is more common in men. The disease can be either idiopathic or hereditary. In the hereditary form, there is a mutation in septin 9 that occurs on chromosome 17, and the symptoms there can be recurrent. For clinical features, it typically begins pretty acutely as an intense pain in the shoulder, which can radiate to the neck and arm, most of the time it's unilateral, but sometimes it can be bilateral. Movement typically makes the pain worse, and the pain is constant and lasts hours to weeks. Shortly after the pain starts, acute weakness happens in the same arm and can inf affect one or more nerve distributions. The upper plexus is more commonly involved, so this can be weakness in the shoulders. There can also be phrenic neuropathy, so nerves that are outside the brachial plexus can be affected, and phrenic neuropathy can lead to diaphragmatic weakness. Most patients will also have sensory symptoms, including numbness and paresthesias, and these also occur most commonly along the lateral arm and forearm. For evaluation, EMG can be done about three weeks after the onset of symptoms, too early and it won't show anything. But three weeks after the symptoms start, it can reveal acute denervation. Later on, it can reveal chronic denervation and re -innervation. Nerve conduction studies are typically normal. And imaging can be helpful to diagnose structural or infectious causes of brachial plexopathy, i.e. look for other causes. On MRI, Brachial plexitis can present with T2 hyperintensities of the brachial plexus or shoulder girdle muscles as well as contrast enhancement. MR neurography can sometimes be helpful and can show nerve thickening and hyperintensity on the T2 as well. MRI cervical spine is sometimes done since cervical radiculopathy can mimic plexopathy. For treatment, treatment is typically supportive and centers around treating the pain, which can include using medications such as NSAIDs or steroids, and physical therapy can be supportive treatment as well. For prognosis, the weakness improves in a few months and can take years to fully recover, but most people recover to near normal strength.